When Vanguard was building up to attack the base of an Alliance's player, I kept cleaning their troops. In fact, they didn't attack that base up there and much later we took it over. Once again, I want to emphasize how important it is to disrupt your opponent early on in all his actions. It would be deadly to wait at your own base until you are attacked yourself. Besides that, I kept attacking at intervals. The bombers are my cannon fodder, whereas I don't want to lose them. Afterwards, the bombers repair at the crane and the helicopters are refilled with ammunition. An hour later, the next wave comes. This suits my own way of playing very well. Basically, I work during the day, but every hour I can spend a few minutes for a short attack. Then I work again. Then kills it felt the need to protect the attacked base. In such cases, I have a choice. Either attack a completely different base, as far away as possible, or eliminate the shutdown defense. In the video, you can see that in this case, I chose option 2. If you look closely, you will notice that Vanguard has changed its name back to Top Guns. Quite a strange story. After that, excessive force wanted to protect the base with cheap helicopters. My bombers took the base's fire as usual. My air force then took out the helicopters without fear of being hit by the base. The more the base has been weakened before, the better this works. Eventually, the base will fall. This is another proof that a player who is offline and has forgotten his flags cannot be saved by his alliance. Not even by the number one alliance against a single player. Yes, liegen die Fetzen. Was ist Herr Obert? However, it also happens that the attacked player locks in in time. This is what happened, for example, against the player Korn. Assuming for sure that this opponent would be locked out for a long time, as usual, we did not go through with the attack in one go. Then, after the first wave, we found Cornell rebuilding defensive towers and setting flags. This saved his base for the next three days, because faced with numerous bases without flags, we still don't attack any base with flags. It is also important I play the whole map and not just one corner somewhere. So the opponent never knows where I will hit him next. Of course, this is only possible because some players in this huge alliance are always forgetting their flex. This is exactly what makes this map relatively easy. Had it not been for this forgetfulness on the part of my opponents, my rapid growth here would have been absolutely impossible. This way, I take one easy target after another. And then I discover an attractive target at the lower right corner of the map. We'll continue with that in the next episode. See you soon!